Hello, um, so in this video I'm going to talk a bit about the crisis in Syria and my thoughts on that situation. Um, well, where to begin? Firstly, the most obvious thing is that Syria stands out from the Arab Spring countries in that the conflict there has been a lot more protracted um, than, for example, Egypt, Tunisia or Libya. Um, in those countries the conflicts and the revolutions were over in a relatively short period of time there's still ongoing issues but Syria has been by far the most protracted and it's no longer a revolution it's a full-scale civil war at this stage um, terrible terrible situation it's I've seen very unsettling uh, pictures online of children blown apart and uh, things that really are quite quite shocking um, I think with Syria it's very very hard to know what approach the world should take um, first and foremost um, I want to say it's not Libya so I think any sort of intervention in Syria would be a lot more complicated and not viable because with Syria you have a much larger population over a much smaller area than you do in Libya so that would be a lot more complicated um, secondly is the the dynamics around the, the politics of this conflict um, now a lot of Syrians online are um, obviously very very emotionally moved by what's happening in their country um, and for those of us who enjoy, who enjoy living in uh, in relative peace who enjoy stability it's very very difficult to comprehend what life is like in a country where hundreds of people are being slaughtered every single day it's, it's difficult to comprehend that um, now this isn't the first time this has happened in Syria um, 1982 there was the infamous Hama massacre um, and that's uh, and I think this is even surpassing that uh, the exact number of people killed is estimates vary but it's a, a low of about 18,000 and a high of 30,000 either way it's a lot of people for me this really really reminds me of the Bosnian war in terms of the the stalemate, the the fact that this vicious conflict is ongoing and there doesn't seem to be any real sign that this is going to end anytime soon and also the the supposed inactivity of the international community um, so there's a lot of similarities to Bosnia I'm not the only person to see that, so, I mean President Clinton um, ex-President Clinton, he, he pointed out that an analogy with Bosnia um, and also the sort of uh, urban style warfare in Aleppo, Damascus and Homs really reminds me of the siege of Sarajevo um, the atrocities are similar to that which occurred in Bosnia so there are some similarities um, in terms of what, what the international community should do um, clearly there's vested interests on all sides uh, so the approach that countries take um, there's a lot of uh, scenarios as to how that will impact them um, the Syrian people are obviously sick of this inactivity they, they can't comprehend why nothing why the international community isn't doing anything it's important to recognize some things um, I feel to an extent the West can't win with these situations because if we intervene militarily then we'll be branded colonialists people will shout it's Iraq all over again they'll say this is all the West does interfere in other countries and so on but the Syrian people are demanding some sort of help so my question to any Syrians watching this is what, what exactly do you want what form of help do you want now I'm uh, I'm not going to say I empathise because I, I cannot comprehend the the situation from a first hand experience all I can say is I've got deep compassion for the Syrian civilians who are suffering 
Um, I think China and Russia's stance is disgraceful, the, the UN veto, because they weren't just vetoing, they say they're neutral, but when you are neutral in cases of oppression, then you're automatically siding with the oppressor. And it's very clear that Bashar Assad has a lot of blood on his hands in this conflict. Now, that veto was not calling for military action. It was simply a veto to condemn the violence by the Assad regime. And Russia and China couldn't even pull themselves to do that. Now, Russia supplies the arms to Syria. And I think in the case of China, they're frightened of uh, what trend this will take, i.e. regime change. They're paranoid about any scrutiny of their own totalitarianism um, and one-party rule. So I think both Russia and China, to say that they're neutral is laughable. They they really aren't neutral. I think they're definitely biased towards the regime. Um, of course, the other side would be that, uh, well, th they'll say, well, the West is biased towards the rebels. Um, not exactly. I, I personally, I, I don't know what direction the Free Syrian Army will take. And I think if we do help them to any extent, we need to see what a post-Assad Syria will look like. Uh, for example, will it be a secular democracy? Will it be an Islamist theocracy? Um, I have to say I'm always wary when I hear uh, fighters, rebel fighters in these Arab Spring countries shouting Allah Wakbar, Allah Wakbar. Um, because now, in the situation of Libya, Libya didn't turn into a theocracy, at least not yet. Uh, a moderate was elected in the recent elections. Um, so it's not quite a case that these regimes are needed to keep stability in those countries. Um, I think that's a funny argument. When you have an, a brutal, oppressive regime that uses torture, uh, that guns down protesters, there's absolutely no moral high ground to support such a regime. Um, but it's very, very difficult to know. Firstly, I would say each Arab Spring country is different. So you can't say what works, for example, in Egypt is going to work in Syria, what works in Libya will work in Syria, and so on. Because that's there is slightly different cultures, different scenarios, different political situations, so, so they're not entirely comparable. Um, Syria, I don't think a military intervention would help in this case, so I, I'm I'm not in support of that, and I really don't think any Western government is taking that idea seriously. But at the same time, we're constantly being charged of doing with doing nothing, you know. And again, this comes down to the thing: the West can't really win if we do help and uh, provide military intervention then we're called colonialists, we're accused of interfering um, and after Iraq no Western politician is going to make that be so reckless to, as to go into another Middle East country um, Libya is North Africa, it's a different region anyway, I think Syria would be far too complex for military intervention so the only real options here, the only real culmination would be if if Bashar Assad is assassinated um, if either side claims a military victory, and that doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. Um, I'm reluctant to say we should provide weapons, because that would inadvertently be taking a side. And also, uh, I mean, the French president's proposed that, I think. Um, I'm not sure if that's the best idea, because I think we still need to know more about the Free Syrian Army. I mean, in recent weeks they've been accused of massacres, which are just as bad as those committed by Assad's regime. Um, I mean, the the excuses by the Assad regime that all those they're killing are terrorists is simply, I mean, unless you watch RT or press TV or another propaganda source, then really that doesn't, no one's going to believe that. Uh, because there's the number of civilians, women and children, and non-combatant men who have died in this conflict is staggering. Um, so, yeah, I think it, it is very, very difficult to know what step to take. I, I really, I really hope this ends soon because the suffering of the Syrian people is profound. Um, 
but the Syrians have to ask if they really want help, what sort of help do they want? I mean, I, I don't agree with this logic that, oh, it's none of our business, we'll have nothing to do with it. I think that's... I, I don't agree with that logic, because when people are being oppressed in one part of the world, then it's on the collective conscience of everyone. I just don't agree with the idea we should turn our back because it's not our problem. Um, that doesn't mean I support military intervention there. Like I said, I don't think it's the right answer for Syria. There's a big difference with Libya. Now, in Libya, there was a clear call by Libyan people for intervention. Now, whatever you think of the conflict, that's a fact. Um, so Libya is very different from Iraq and Syria. Because in Libya, you actually had people waving the British and French flags um, and cheering David Cameron and Nicolas Sarkozy when they arrived. Um, so I do believe we helped to liberate Libya. Um, I believe that. Um, Gaddafi wasn't just a brutal dictator who caused profound suffering to the Libyans, but he had also ordered the attack at Lockerbie, which was Britain's worst ever terrorist attack. So I did think we had a right to be involved in that conflict, and I think in retrospect it was the right decision. It was a bloody war, but after 41 years of dictatorship, the Libyans wanted a change, and they needed outside help to get that change. Now, I'm not a pacifist, um, which you'll probably have noticed from this video. I believe the intervention in Libya was the right choice. It was a lesser of two evils. War is never good. It's never good. But some of the propaganda about on RT about the intervention is just absolutely... It's absurd. Um, the factor there is that the Libyan people were calling for intervention. Now, so far, from what I've seen, the Syrians haven't been calling for military intervention. And in the end of the day, it's what the people of the country want. We can't impose our will. Um, but at the same time, I think it's wrong to ignore a situation just because it supposedly has nothing to do with you. This is an interconnected world. And if there's a situation in the country where people are suffering enormously, it's not just those who have been killed. There's a humanitarian crisis with refugees. I just think that there's no moral argument to be said that um, it's their domestic affairs will stay out of it. That's a Chinese attitude. Um, and I just don't agree with that. Um, and that doesn't mean military intervention. I think military intervention should be a last option. But in some circumstances it is morally justified as the lesser of two evils. Um, I, I particularly want to hear Syrian opinions here. Um, I I really don't know what the best answer is for Syria. It's a depressing situation um, and it's very, very difficult for those of us who take peace for granted to to comprehend what is going on there on a first-hand basis. So what's your views on this? Um, by the way, if you just want to attack the West and say, oh, you're interfering, blah, 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 I would point out that no matter what we do, we're going to be criticised. If we do nothing, we're criticised for not caring. Um, and if we do intervene, then we're warmongers. So make up your mind. You can't have it both ways. Um, if, if you're a Syrian, my heart goes out to the Syrian people for the suffering they're going through. But I, I'm genuinely interested in what approach you think is best in this situation. Um, I mean, the, I can't comprehend the pain and the mental anguish that the Syrian people are going through. Um, so, what, what's your views on this? Um, should there be some sort of intervention? Um, should there be simply... Should, I don't think sanctions will work because sanctions have been proven to have the greatest impact on civilians. Weapons, well, sending weapons to rebels would be inadvertently taking a side and but not just that it would also we don't know what a post assad Syria will look like and I think the Free Syrian Army is still to give us assurances about that um, I mean will it be hostile to the West we just don't know let me know your thoughts I really really hope the this situation can be resolved soon